Hey guys, so today's video is going to be another Battle of the Foundation Sticks video and today we are tackling high-end foundations. I recently posted a video just like this but all about drugstore foundation sticks so if you haven't seen that I will link it down below. Today is part two we are talking about high-end foundation sticks and I have seven to share with you guys today which is a lot. I don't want this video to be too long so I'm gonna try to breeze through them but I bet you this video is more than 20 minutes. Check. Check. I bet you it's more than 20 minutes. I'm going to be comparing all seven of these foundation sticks to one another. I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts, mini reviews on each one. And just like my drugstore video, I'm going to be including demos of me applying each foundation. Just so that you can see how it looks on the skin. I noticed when I was editing my drugstore one that they all looked pretty good on camera when I applied it. Which I thought was so funny because they were all so different and they performed so differently. Same goes for these foundations. I haven't looked back at the footage since I haven't started editing it. But my reviews are not based on how it looks initially. It's about how the foundation wears, how it looks throughout the day, how it feels on the skin. So just keep that in mind. But okay, I'm gonna get started. I'm not gonna go in any specific order. I'm just I'm just gonna grab them and show them to you. I've kind of placed them in order from like matte to dewy, but they're similar ones in between. I'm, I'm just gonna show you. Okay, so first up we have the Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation stick. I am in the shade beige and I love the fact that Anastasia has so many colors. The color range is amazing. They have a ton of shades in the range. You will definitely be able to find a color for your skin. This one is also the cheapest out of all of the ones I'm going to be talking about. Some of these have a pretty high price tag. This one is only $25, which isn't necessarily dirt cheap or anything, but for it being a high-end brand, I think that's an amazing price. I will say that this color beige on the Sephora website is labeled as light skin with neutral undertones but I don't think it's very neutral. I think it's pretty yellow in my opinion. Even though there are a lot of shade selections, I feel like the descriptions are kind of misleading on a lot of the shades. She also has really good highlighting and contouring colors, so you can contour, highlight, and apply your foundation within the range. This is nice. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. Honestly, after hearing so many people talk about it, I thought that I was going to hate it. I didn't think it was going to work for me at all because I hear everyone with oily skin raving about it and then everyone with dry skin not loving it so much. So I thought for sure that I was going to hate it, but surprisingly I don't. It's not as drying as I thought it was going to be. Now keep in mind I am wearing a primer underneath all of these foundations. I'm using my Glossier Priming Moisturizer. It's the same primer I used in my drugstore foundation stick video. So that really did help moisturize my skin before applying this foundation. It has a matte finish, but surprisingly it is pretty natural. If you don't moisturize though, it will cling on to the dry skin. But I would definitely recommend it for those of you with normal to oily skin. One thing I really like about this is that it's not tacky to the touch. Obviously, most matte foundations aren't tacky, but it's nice because you don't really need to set it. One weird thing about this foundation though is that it doesn't really apply on my nose. It's like the weirdest thing. I have a very dry nose, maybe that's why it doesn't really apply well. But I will try to put this on my nose and it's like it doesn't stick to the nose. Weirdest thing ever. It does last a pretty long time on the skin though, like I will be on my face for a lot of hours, but it starts to break up and get really weird around my nose first. In my opinion, I think it applies way better with a brush versus a beauty blender. You get more coverage with a brush, and it has medium coverage. You can build this up, but not so much if you have dry skin. It's not very buildable. I find that it looks even drier the more I try to apply. So yeah, it is pretty good, and I really like the price. It's just for my skin type, it's not the best. Next up, we have the Lancome Tinty Doll Ultra Wear Makeup Stick. It has an SPF of 21, and I am in the shade 250 Bisque W. I don't think it's very warm. It says it's warm, but I would say this is more of a neutral undertone. There is a bisque color that's labeled as N, like labeled as neutral, but it's not neutral in my opinion. It's like pink. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> this one is a little bit pricier. This retails for $42. And I completely forgot to tell you guys how many ounces were in the foundation sticks at the drugstore. Like in that video, I forgot to tell you how much product you get in each foundation. Such a brain fart. And I totally forgot to do that again today. But I'm going to do it. So this one is 25 bucks, the Anastasia one. And you get... 0.32 ounces. Stick foundations though, I didn't know this a couple months ago, but stick foundations typically have less product in it because they're higher in pigment or they're like solidified, you know, since they are solid. I don't know the science behind it, they just normally have less product. 
This one is 42 bucks and it is 0.31 ounces. This one is actually pretty freaking good. I would say it has a soft matte, kind of like a satin finish. It's not as matte as the Anastasia one. It's a little bit more natural. I would say those of you with dry skin can get away with using this one, but I think it would also work really well for oily skin. I love that it's not tacky to the touch at all, so you don't have to set it, but I definitely 100% prefer it more with a beauty blender, believe it or not. I noticed that every time I try to apply this foundation with a brush, it just emphasizes my pores. At least when I'm using a moisturizing primer underneath like the one I used in the demo I definitely prefer a beauty blender but if I'm using a pore minimizing primer then yes I like it with a brush I'm not so sure you can tell on camera but in person you can definitely see my pores a lot more on the side where I use the brush versus on the side where I used a beauty blender but I don't have that issue if I use a pore filling primer I would say this has a medium to full coverage. On my skin, I noticed it getting a little bit cakey when I tried to build it up too much. So I would just apply as much as I can at once instead of trying to build up on top of what I already put down because it starts to look a little bit cakey. But I like the finish and it lasts a really, really long time on my skin. They're not kidding when they say ultra wear. I think it, it is, it's ultra wearing. Next up is definitely my favorite out of all the foundation sticks. I'm just gonna straight up tell you right now. This one is my favorite. I thought the Makeup Forever one was my favorite, but this one has taken its place. This is the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Stick. This also has a ton of colors in the range. If there's one thing that's really lacking in the drugstore in terms of their foundation stick is colors. As you guys know, we talked about it in that video. Their color selection, not so good. The high-end brands definitely have more shades to choose from. The Hourglass one has has a ton of different shades. I'm in the shade Bisque. I have this foundation in like five different colors. This is when I'm the fairest, as I am right now. It's the foundation I'm wearing, and I am as fair as I can get. This one retails for $46, so even pricier than the last one, and you get 0.25 ounces, which is even less than the last one. So far, this is the one that has the least amount of product, which totally sucks because compared to its price, it is a pricey foundation stick, but I love it so much. The finish is so beautiful, and what I love most about it is that it's extremely full coverage, but it feels very lightweight. I didn't feel the need to apply two layers in the demo. I love this foundation with a brush. I definitely prefer it with a brush over a beauty blender because the coverage stays there. Like I notice when I use a brush, I get full, full coverage, but it's not sticky, it's not greasy, it's not cakey at all. It doesn't look thick on the skin, but it covers so much. And I love that it's a natural finish. It's not too dewy, it's not too matte. It's like the perfect finish, but it's not tacky at all. I didn't set my foundation today. I don't always set it. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. And in my personal opinion, I do think it's worth the high price tag. Next up is the Bobbi Brown Skin Foundation Stick. This one is the same price as the Hourglass one, so it's $46, but you do get more product than the Hourglass. You have 0.31 ounces in this one. I'm in the shade Warm Ivory, and this is this one's super light. And even though you get more product in this one, I don't love it as much as my Hourglass one. I can't lie. But I still think it is a good foundation. This one I definitely prefer with a beauty blender. I find that when I try to apply it with a brush, I just have to sit there and really, really buff it into the skin. Like it takes longer to sink into the skin with a brush versus a beauty blender. I guess because the beauty blender really just like pounces it into the skin. It just doesn't look as good with a brush. This is just one of those foundations that look better when you take your time and really push it into the skin. But I do think it has a very beautiful, natural finish. Not too matte, not too dewy. The only weird thing about this foundation is it transfers on my clothes so easily, which is so weird because it's not like extremely tacky on the skin and it lasts a good time on the skin. Like it's not something that breaks up really easily or that only lasts a couple of hours, but somehow it gets on my clothes really easily. Like if I touch my face, and I haven't set it, it'll get all over my fingers. If I put my phone to my face, like it will really, really come off on my phone, which I find so incredibly strange. So my advice to you would be to definitely set this one. No matter what skin type you have, I would definitely set it. Next up, we have the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Invisible Cover Stick Foundation. This was my baby before I was introduced to the Hourglass one. I'm in the shade Y325, which I think online is called Flesh. Side so note, I hate that word. Flesh? Like, that's such a weird word. And this retails for $43, and you get 0.44 ounces. So, so far, out of all of these foundations, 
this one has the most product. So when you do the math with the money, like it's not terrible. I love this one so much because it looks freaking perfect in photos. I think even more than all the other ones. It looks stunning in flash photography. It was like it was made for flash photography. And it has full coverage, but it doesn't look cakey on the skin. I love how much it covers. You don't have to do too many layers with this. Just a little bit is enough to cover what you need. I apply a lot, but you don't need to. And you get more coverage if you do use a brush. It does look really pretty with a beauty blender as well, but I find that I like the airbrushed look a brush gives. It is a little bit tacky to the touch, I'm not gonna lie, because it is more of a dewy foundation. Not incredibly dewy, but there is a little bit of glow to it. So it is a little bit tacky, but it's not greasy either. It's not like slippy or slidey. You just might want to set this down. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Definitely my second favorite out of the bunch. This next one was extremely requested for me to try out after I did my luxury makeup video and some of you guys found out I was doing this like foundation stick battle. A lot of you guys asked me to review this thing. <laughs> this is the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick. So we got a luxury, a luxury makeup item in this video. I'm in the shade 4.5 Ivory. This foundation is $82. Let that sink in. This is me fanning you, because you're about to faint. I know, $82, that's crazy. Like who would spend that much on foundation? I don't know, but that's how much it is. But the only thing I will say, I will say is that this is half an ounce. Out of all the seven foundations in this video, this one has the most product in it. You get literally half an ounce. So that's always a good thing. I mean, it's still way overpriced, crazy, seriously, insanely priced. It's like double of the, it's crazy. You can buy like 87 Anastasia ones or one of these. Like it's insane, I know, but at least you get more product. <laughs> This one, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you use a pore minimizing primer. This kind of foundation doesn't really work well with one of those creamy, moisturizing, hydrating kind of primers because it really does emphasize the pores. Like this will sink into your pores. I would say this has a good medium coverage, but it is definitely buildable. This is a pretty dewy foundation. Once it dries down, it does look a little bit less dewy. Obviously, it looks more dewy with a beauty blender than it does with a brush. So if you're not into that like wet look, then definitely definitely go with a brush on this one. When you put your fingers to your face, there is a tacky feeling, almost greasy, like borderline greasy. It is a little bit slippy, a little bit slidey. But when you have a full face of makeup on, this does look so beautiful and so natural and dewy and fresh. Like it looks gorgeous, but it doesn't last that long on the skin. So I don't know, that's pretty much what I have to say about it. It's a nice finish. It works really well with my skin type. Like it looks beautiful, but I also don't think it's worth the $80. I will not repurchase this just because it's so much money and I love my hourglass one way more I love the makeup forever one way more like I would pay 40 bucks for it for sure but 82 that's expensive that's too expensive okay and then last up we saved my least favorite for last I don't like this one at all this is a foundation stick from the brand wander beauty and this is their flash focus hydrating foundation stick I am in the shade light. Unlike all the other foundations I spoke about today, the shade selection with this one is not the best. They only have five shades, at least on the Sephora website. I don't know if on the personal website, like on wanderbeauty.com or something, I don't know if they have more shades. But on Sephora, there's only five, and that just doesn't cut it, that's not enough. But anyway, so it's labeled as a hydrating foundation stick, but let me tell you, hydrating is definitely an understatement. This is dewy, this is so dewy, almost too dewy. It has pretty good reviews on the Sephora website, but it just did not work for me. I would say this would work for you if you have extremely, like, chronic dry skin because it has almost like an emollient texture to it. A little bit greasy, like very, very tacky to the touch. Like, this is something you 1,000, 1,000 million percent, you want to set it. I would say that it has a light coverage, but you could definitely build it up to full. It doesn't look cakey, it just looks a little bit too dewy for me. It doesn't cling on to any dryness, like I said, it is very, very hydrating. I mean, they're right, it's very hydrating. It's just a little bit too much for me. I kind of feel like I definitely feel it on the skin, but I mean, that does go away once you set it. I don't hate it once I set it, don't get me wrong. It doesn't look bad. It's just not my favorite, if I'm gonna be honest. It also doesn't last that long, like it starts to break down very, very fast throughout the day, and I'm just gonna give this one a no. Like at the I don't, I don't love it. I mean, it's not horrible. It's just, I don't really like it. Oh, I forgot to tell you the price of this. This one is $40 and you get 0.32 ounces. 
So yeah guys, that completes this video. I hope it was helpful in some way. Maybe you are in the market for some high-end foundation sticks and maybe this video helped you. Leave me a comment down below if there's a high-end foundation stick that you really, really love that I didn't mention today and maybe I'll check it out. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Sorry. Please. Oh. Okay, where were we?